the center of the room, when you enter, one of the first things you see is this piece by Sarah Lucas. Uh, it's called, uh, Did Anyone Mention Totalitarianism? And well, like many of the works by Sarah Lucas, it actually speaks for itself. Right above it, you see one of the several pieces by uh, Daniel Richter that we have in the house. You may recognize the iconic uh, photo of the murder of Osama bin Laden in the background. Uh, with the collage of the three monkeys over it, uh, that instead of uh, shutting their mouth, eyes, and ears, are actually expressing themselves through the art. I think it's a very powerful image. H here to the right, you see a 2019 video game for the vintage 1986 Nintendo NES console. So it's a new game for a very old console. It's a very powerful story about a little girl discovering disinformation, discovering fake science, and basically making her way to become a whistleblower and alert the public opinion about climate issues, among others. It's a wonderful game. Uh, actually, anyone can download it for free to play it at home using an emulator. But this one is on a recycled game cartridge. So instead of producing new cartridges, they actually use old ones that they repurpose to mark the environmental nature of the story. Over here, you see the compelling uh, hologram um, by the Norwegian street artist AFK. It uh, represents mostly this orange figure. Um, is a, a, a work he put in the streets of uh, Bergen in Norway, where he's mostly active, called The Persecution. But now taking shape of a 3D sculpture with many such details, like the collateral murder video, playing and a Wikileaks sticker and a lot of very minute details and, and clever information to it. It's a very impressive uh, piece that is really catching the eye. Now if you look to the left, you are actually going to catch the, the, the beginning of this piece here called Duty Free Art. It's a rather imposing uh, piece of work. It, uh, it contains 150 kilograms of sand as for the third screen of the projection, it's by Hito Steyel, who is an amazing uh, artist. And she's basically using the Syria files of Wikileaks to demonstrate, uh, first of all, how art is being used to uh, evade taxes, and how art as a currency is actually a tool uh, of capitalism to uh, evade the redistribution of wealth. And is also illustrating how the whole of the art world uh, was in the bed of the Bashar al-Assad regime at the same time that the whole world was demonizing him, calling him you know, the butcher and the dictator and so on. So it's a very compelling piece in how uh, art intersects with activism. It is a piece of activism based on the Wikileaks Syria files. Over here to the wall, you can see another piece by uh, Daniel Richter. Uh, where this silhouette has this uh, very intriguing shadow over it that somehow evokes surveillance and the, the whole collection of metadata. Um, we are again very fortunate to have such a, a great painter uh, as part of our uh, exhibit. And I, I find this one also very uh, dark and, and, and poetic. Uh, now right to your left is this uh, uh, quite impressive sculpture by fashion icon Daniel Lismore. It is a very uh, rich composition, as you can tell. It is called Hacktivist. And it's quite unsure whether the, the frame around the, the head of the figure uh, makes it a painting, or on the contrary, is it a, a mirror? Are we looking at ourselves with the mouth shut and the eyes closed as a figure of the Hacktivist? If you get closer, you will see a lot of trinkets, like a badge of Chelsea Manning, like this uh, free Assange tape taken from uh, a protest in London. And the, the cape that the figure is, is wearing is an actual free Assange uh, banner that was used during a protest in London. Now, one piece that is very easy to, to overlook is over here, this TV that looks like it's off, right? But you can tell that the Samsung logo is actually lit. So you may be left to wonder, what is this doing here? Well, it turns out that this TV is the actual same model of Samsung Smart TV that was described in the Vault 7, the leak by WikiLeaks of the unregulated cyber weapons of the CIA, in which you would learn that the CIA could remotely 
activate the microphone and the camera of this TV and basically look at you while you thought your TV was off. The people of the CIA would call this a fake off, which sounds a little bit like fuck off, which is a little bit the message uh, we may want to send to the CIA today when looking at their uh, Vault 7 uh, equipment. So this is a very powerful piece of concept art by the Median group Bitnik, and it's just this, you know, a TV that may or may not be off depending on whether or not the CIA is listening at us right now. Now if you want to proceed to the other room, when you enter this room, the, the first thing you, you may see is this uh, piece by Davide Dormino, the same sculpture that did those four figures of Assange, Manning and Snowden sitting on chairs with a fourth chair that was there for the public to say anything. Anything to say was the title of the piece. This one is indeed called Deep State, as you can tell on the, on the tongue itself. And it's a tongue-in-cheek piece of humor uh, for a sculpture. Now to your right, you may see the uh, very popular war crime zomatic uh, in this box of ammunition by the US Army. Uh, lay some secret. Uh, would you do us the honor to press this red button? Go ahead, go ahead, do it. Oh, ho, what's this? You may wonder. Coming out of the war crimes matic are uh, individual Afghan war logs. Those entries by the US Army detailing, well, sometimes the, those unreported war crimes and deaths of civilian. You can see that this one involved one killed and zero wounded. Uh, only war logs with at least one dead people are displayed by the war crimes medic. This complex and nerdy uh, map is uh, actually an algorithm that if you follow it carefully from the start here all the way to the end and if you can afford uh, you will end up paying no tax. The fine people of uh, Ribne I've studied the Julius Baer uh, leaks by WikiLeaks, the, the Panama Papers, the offshore leaks, and came up with this fine study of how tax evasion is actually working. There's a bunch of other maps here. Uh, oh, one disappeared. We may have to reprint them. Uh, this one details how to anonymize um, transactions. It's probably hard to, to see on, uh, on screen. So people may have to visit Noisy Leaks until October the 30th or take a look online at the works of Ribner. To the left, this machine here with a strange screen is actually seeding some of the documents of these leaks, including the Julius Baer leaks by WikiLeaks. By simply being present in the gallery and using the network connection, it is actually sharing these documents to the world as a statement on how and why we want to make uh, the WikiLeaks uh, documents available to the world. On the right here, you will see the Coal Spy Coal Center by the Peng Collective. Uh, it is a very clever uh, trick using 30,000 phone numbers at the NSA, the CIA, the FBI. Let's continue and take a look uh, to the left. This uh, impressive map over here um, um, is called the Actors of a Persecution. It is based on a collective work done on a wiki called challengepower.info and it's mostly based on what is called uh, open source intelligence, so only published information about the various people involved in the Julian Assange case. So Julian and is indeed at the center. Uh, WikiLeaks is indeed uh, also present here with a lot of connections. But to illustrate uh, how it works, a very simple example is to look on the very top at Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney is now on top as the, the king of conflicts of interest because you can see to the left an arrow going to Halliburton, the war profiteer he was the chief executive uh, director of. At the same time, he was to the right a vice president of George W. Bush. So that's how the map works. You can just follow the links and the story gets told to you. For instance, you may recognize here the judge Emma Arbuthnot who has been overseeing the Assange case. She's the uh, wife of the Baron James Arbuthnot, who is also the advisory, at the advisory board of Thales, 
over here, the French weapon company that has been exposed by the spy files published by WikiLeaks. How can the judge oversee the Assange case when her husband is so obviously implicated in the WikiLeaks case is a mystery. Also, you can see that their son, Alexander Arbuthnot, is actually the vice president of a company called Darktrace, whose objective is actually to hunt whistleblowers and who partners with the GCHQ and recruits former NSA agents. How, again, how can she be the main judge in the case? So this map is somehow telling the story, the compelling story of the conflict of interest surrounding the Assange case and also telling the backstory, the complex backstory of WikiLeaks and illustrating uh, the whole quagmire of a clusterfuck that makes that Assange is now rotting in Belmarsh today. Um, over here, you can see the, another tongue-in-cheek uh, piece. Uh, this is actually not, not part of it. Um, this is a piece by Ai Weiwei and Jake Applebaum. Um, the stuffed panda actually contains shreds of the Snowden leaks and other confidential documents, as well as an archive of these documents. Uh, it's a bit of a, of a pun because panda is the name of a cryptographic protocol for key exchange and is also slang in Chinese for the secret police. So the, the, the stuffed pandas have been smuggled out of uh, China and that was also part of the, of the artwork. Over here, you can see another, another Daniel Richter. We have three in the house, uh, which is uh, an original collage, a poster. He designed for uh, the, the expo and, and the events running here until October the 30th. You're welcome to take a, a printed copy of, of this poster uh, along with many other posters uh, when you visit um, the expo. Over here, you see the two screens of uh, the uh, Median Group Bitnik piece called A Delivery for Mr. Assange. They sent in 2013 a parcel to the Ecuadorian embassy and were filming through a hole in the parcel uh, and recording its GPS position. So the, the package itself, every 10 minutes, was bro broadcasting its position and a photo until it made it eventually to the Ecuadorian embassy. That's the part you're filming right now where Julian actually received the parcel and was playing with it, showing these cards in front of it. Over here on the shelves, you will see an uh, uh, impressive collection of books. Those 66 volumes called Secret Plus No Foreign are the entirety of the WikiLeaks diplomatic cables that were classified either secret or secret slash slash no foreign. It's actually the most secret of the diplomatic cables published by WikiLeaks. It's three meters of books. Now you can see the volume 31, for instance, is going from um, the fifth week of 2008 to the eighth week of 2008. And inside, at any page, those juicy state secrets, Indonesian counterterrorism and their radicalization initiatives, AQI uses women with Down syndrome to attack market. Blue Lantern pre-license and use check on application 05. Now. Turkey will condition overflight clearance for air choreo flight on inspection of aircraft and cargo. This is all the dirty secrets, actually the dirtiest secrets of the US diplomacy, accessible here for everyone to, to browse. You're welcome to come anytime, sit down in a corner and, and take a look. Over here on the wall, you can see a piece by Angela Richter and Chris Kondek that is very peculiar. It has been shot in 2012. It was part then of a, a theater play that Angela directed. It was called Assassinate Assange. And the, the, the dispositive for her play was that all actors on stage were these white gorillas. And at some point, this video was flashing, and it's indeed, you recognize the collateral murder video, entirely redone with these white gorillas. Uh, as far as I know, this piece has never been seen uh, outside of the theaters after 2012. What, what makes it particularly interesting to me is that it is dated 2012. And at the time before the height of the character assassination on Julian Assange, the play was called Assassinate Assange. And you can see here the arch of the works that we have exposed here. From this 2012 piece to some uh, pieces that are uh, made this year, it's 10 years 
of pieces, all of them related to WikiLeaks and its releases. Over here, you can see the, the various posters that are also somehow part of the expo that people are welcome to take in quantity and distribute around. Uh, you have the, the map that you've seen earlier. You have a Lady Justice over here that is a, a wonderful piece by the Norwegian street artist AFK. Um, this one here uh, is um, a mural that was a 20 meters high piece in Berlin some months ago. The, the poster by Daniel Richter and others. And if you look in the box, in the safe over here, you'll see a few remaining copies of the Collateral Murder mixtape. I invite you to get one. It's, uh, it's the soundtrack of a war crime on the form of a banal uh, cassette tape. It's an ode to the 80s and 90s and to a way of spreading information that is actually still functioning today. I slide this one in your pocket. Um, and to... Uh, to continue to the right, you'll see this other piece by Davide Dormino that represents the Wikileaks file, the, the extraordinary book that was uh, published um, based on the, the, the findings of studying the, the uh, US diplomatic cables of the cable gate. It is made heavy, as important as this book is, and uh, somehow dangerous with those metal spikes, rusty spikes as dangerous as somehow it is perceived maybe by the US State Department. Last but not least, the final piece that you actually cannot see has been put behind this hole in the wall. It's by the Cheeks on Speed. It's called Key to Information. It is a USB key that has been sealed in the wall. It evokes the difficulty to actually access information. It evokes the uh, hidden information. And maybe someday uh, archaeologists of the future uh, we'll find whatever secrets it contains.